In this video, I'm going to give you five weird tricks that help me lose 80 pounds. I grew up with a weight problem. I was always trying to lose weight. I was like on every diet. By the time I was 30, I had listened to all the diet and weight loss advice there is. And what actually helped me in many cases was to take that advice and flip it around. And that's when I had better success. So number one was the idea of banishing deadlines. Now this kind of flies in the face of most goal setting advice. Most goal setting advice says to be smart, to make your goal specific and measurable and attainable and relevant and time bound. And they always harp on time bound. You need to have a deadline because if you don't have a deadline, then you're just going to just never do it. But uh, what I found was when I would set a deadline, first of all, my deadlines in hindsight were completely ridiculous. They were too aggressive. I didn't know that at the time, but I was expecting myself to lose like five pounds a week and be done with the whole weight loss journey in a few months. And so what would happen is I would make the thing really difficult and it would be too difficult. I couldn't sustain it. And then what would happen is I would fall short of the goal and then I would quit. And each time this happened, it made it harder and harder and harder to attempt weight loss again. It was just really demotivating. So one day I decided, you know what? There is no deadline. I am just going to keep going until I reach this goal. I, I, I just like, it doesn't matter to me if it takes years or if it takes until I've just struggled with my weight my entire life. Like I'm not quitting until I get to my goal weight. And when I did that, what was great was all of a sudden, I could be a lot more realistic with myself and I could relax and I was okay with me making mistakes because I knew like, oh, it's no big deal because eventually I'm going to figure this out. The second thing I did was I didn't tell anybody I was trying to lose weight. In the past, I used to talk about it all the time. I would tell everybody like I'm on a diet right now, you know, like I can't, I can't have that. And that never really worked out well for me. The reason I didn't tell anybody I was trying to lose weight was because I was embarrassed and I was really scared of people knowing that I was trying to lose weight because I knew that was going to bring more attention on me. And I really didn't want that. Uh, I also was afraid, you know, if I told people I was trying to lose weight, then, you know, they'd be watching me closer and maybe they would watch me fail. And I knew from personal experience that sometimes when you tell people that you're trying to lose weight, there there's like two ways it can go. And neither one is helpful. One way it can go is people can try to convince you, you don't really need to lose weight. And in my case, I knew that I needed to lose weight, but I also knew that I might be convinced otherwise because I kind of wanted to believe like, oh yeah, I, even though I'm obese, I don't really need to lose weight. And on the flip side, I knew some people can be very discouraging. They mean well, but you know, they might tell me things like, oh, it's just, you know, basically impossible <laughs> to lose weight at your age. So good luck. You know, so I just, I decided to keep it private and I'm so glad I did. It gave me that freedom to just build my own plan. Uh, and because I didn't tell anybody what I was doing or anything, like nobody was trying to critique what I was doing and say, oh, well, you know, you should be doing this and this and that uh, instead of doing it that way. Uh, and I knew myself pretty well at that time. At that time, I would have listened to him. I would have just gone and done the other thing because I wasn't in the habit of sticking with anything. And so by the time, you know, people did start to notice that I was losing weight, I was pretty confident in my plan. Uh, and even though people still offered unsolicited advice, <laughs> uh, you know, trying to tell me like, oh, you should cut out carbs and you need to have much faster success things like that. I, I just decided to keep doing it my own way. And that was helpful because I continued doing sustainable things. The third thing I did that was weird was I took a day off every week. Now this was very different than my previous experiences with weight loss. I had always heard, no, you got to stick to the plan and you just got to be on it and you're just on it. And that's just all there is to it. But I heard from Tim Ferriss the idea that actually, if you take a day off every week, you're much more likely to stick with your plan. And so I thought, okay, maybe that will work because in the past I knew that I was in the habit of like, I would be on a plan, be on a plan, never take a break, never take a break. And then finally I would just break. And then I could never get back on plan. It, I had this all or nothing mentality. And so by taking a day off every week, it just got me in this really great practice of learning how to go off plan and then get back on plan. And so that took care of the whole problem of like, I go on vacation. Okay, I'm off plan for several days. And I come back and get right back on plan because I've been practicing it every week, you know, since the beginning. The fourth thing I did was I averaged my weight. 
Now, averaging my weight was just a foreign concept to me uh, up until the time I was about 30. Uh, before that, I always thought you just look at that number and that number in the morning that you see tells you, you know, did you do the right thing yesterday? And that's a very confusing thing uh, because many times, you know, you, you do everything right and then your number's higher the next day. And then sometimes you do everything wrong and then your number's lower the next day. So I made a spreadsheet and you can get your free copy on my website, six miles to supper.com slash freebies. I made a spreadsheet so that it would average my weights and so that I could always see a running seven day average. It was just taking the previous seven days of weights, adding those up, divided by seven, and then showing my, my seven day average. And so what I was able to do then was I was always kind of thinking about at least a week of, of weights and a week's worth of behavior, uh, which helped me to broaden my, my timeline. And because I was doing it that way, I was able to see my patterns better. I wasn't just thinking about what did I do yesterday? I, I was thinking, you know, overall, how have I been, uh, you know, behaving around food? Have I been just overeating a lot or am I doing an overall good job? And this helped to even kind of the, the hills and valleys out, uh, both, you know, emotionally, but also uh, as far as, you know, what my weights were doing. Overall, you know, weight loss always looks like a heartbeat, even if uh, you're averaging your weight. But by doing that, it just to help things to kind of even out a bit more. And it just made it easier to stick with the plan for the long haul. And the fifth thing I did, which is probably the most controversial thing, is that I allowed myself to eat all the foods. So in the past, you know, when I would go on a diet or I would try to be losing weight, I would cut things out, cut out whole food groups, like things like, oh, I'm not going to eat grain. I'm not going to have bread. I, I'm never going to have dessert again. Uh, I'm off sugar, you know, and I would do those things for the short term, but I can never get myself to, in the long run, stick with it. And so this time I just did the opposite. I said, okay, I'm going to allow myself everything. I'm going to learn how to lose weight even when I am still eating cheesecake and chocolate and having wine and eating bread. And that was awesome because then when I got to my goal weight and I entered maintenance, there wasn't like a big deal. It was like, okay, I've been eating this stuff the entire time. It's not like I've cut out cake and now I get to have cake and what am I going to do with that? It was just like, no big deal. Like I know how to lose weight uh, while eating cake. So maintaining while eating cake is no different. So there you have it. Five weird tricks that really did help me lose 80 pounds. Uh, I think overall, you know, just trying to think of things differently, questioning things, being a little skeptical of advice and then figuring out what works for you uh, was a helpful kind of mentality that I had on this journey. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you found it helpful. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe down below. In 2015, I weighed in at 222 pounds, which meant I was obese. I was determined to figure out a way to lose the weight permanently while still eating all the foods that I loved. I found success when I committed to a very simple plan. I practiced intermittent fasting six days a week, took a cheat day on Sunday, and walked six miles every day. I determined that I would not count calories, I would not restrict any foods or carbs, and I would instead focus on eating until I was full. I lost a total of 80 pounds with this plan, and it's helped me maintain in a healthy weight range for over six years. I've taken the lessons I've learned on my weight loss journey and written the Laid Back Guide to Intermittent Fasting, Overcoming Weight Loss Obstacles, and the Laid Back Guide to Weight Loss Maintenance. Grab your copies on Amazon and get started losing weight today.